Jesus, hallelujah. And we're going to give him a magnificent praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and give God some glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is good. And he's mighty good to us. Hallelujah. Each and every day. Each and every hour. Each and every minute. Every second of the day. He's good. He's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture says, Psalms 150 and 2 says, lift up your hands. The, the scripture says, 150 and 2. Praise him for his mighty acts. Hallelujah. According to his excellent works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to praise God in here. And then John 7 and 38 says, He that believeth in me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we just lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Flow to you. Flow to you, Jesus. Let the rivers of my worship flow to you. Hallelujah. Anybody want to worship him on today? Come on, lift your hands if you're ready to worship God in this place. If you're ready to give him a true worship from your heart. You know what you've been through. and You know what you experience. So this is between you and God. You want to lift your hands in the atmosphere and just give God a worship like no other. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Let the rivers of my worship flow to you. Come on, lift your hands in the atmosphere. 
for Jesus. Come on and put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We give you glory. We magnify you, God. Hallelujah. Come on and lift up the praise in here. Come on and bless God. Come on and bless God for who he is. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. And all my praise flow to you, God. And let all my work, and all my worship, and all my praise, and all my praise flow. Come on, say, Lord, one more time. Let all my work, and all my worship, and all my praise. Come on and lift the praise in the house, hallelujah. Come on, I said lift the praise in the house, hallelujah. Worthy God, worthy praise, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a living God, hallelujah. We give you the glory, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord once more and again? Thank God for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way. Hallelujah. So because of that, we would like to welcome all of our guests, our family, our friends to the Heart of Faith Worship Center. We would like to welcome you to our church where we encourage love, unity, excellence, fellowship, and support in the body of Christ. Where our November events are, uh, November the 14th coming up, we're, we're hoping if the weather is okay, we're going to be having our Community Family Fun Day beginning at 3.30. Um, still, all volunteers are needed. So we're going to try to have it this time. Even if it rains, we still may do it on the inside because I know the kids are really anticipating on this particular event to happen. So November the 14th. Our weekly um, worship opportunities are Sunday school beginning at 9 a.m., morning worship beginning at 10. The first Wednesday of each month, our men's, women, and youth department meet at 7 p.m. Wednesday prayer and Bible study at 7, choir rehearsal is at 8. Youth choir rehearsal is every third Wednesday leading up to that fourth Sunday. We're asking all the youth to come out joining with us and worshiping with us. On our prayer and sick list, we have Elder Grisby, Tony and Mary Gill, Ann Gibson, Alfred Hill, Herschel Garner, James Watts, Mary Garner, uh, Mark Rivers, Renita Patterson, Roy Brown, and Her Harry Lewis. We're asking you guys to keep all of our family and friends lifted up in prayer. Amen. November birthdays. I know we have Tiana. Any other November birthdays in the audience? <laughs> November birthdays, anyone? <laughs> ah! Happy birthday. <laughs> God bless you. Our, on the conference line every Monday, we have Faith Fellowship International beginning at 7 p.m. We're asking everybody to join in with us where the number is 605-562-3140. The code is 940107. So join in with us on Mondays at 7 p.m. Our Heart of Faith uh, Food Pantry will be you know, this well, Wednesday, November the 18th, beginning at 4.30 to 6.30. We're asking volunteers to come out at 3.30 and um, help in worshiping with us and fellowship with us with the people on that day. I think that's it. Oh, okay. Message from Pastor's Aid Committee. We have our Pastor's Aid is selling raffle tickets. Uh, please see Sister Grisby. Each auxiliary um, is asked to present... Represent with $2,000 by May 31st for pastors and wife appreciation. Each adult member is asked to give $100. The 12 tribes of Israel program will be February the 20th, uh, and they're asking $200 each from each tribe on that day. Enjoy your afternoon and have a blessed day. Thank you. Now, ask you all to get up and go and greet someone. This time, introduce yourself if you don't know that person. 
introduce yourself and let them know who you are. Amen? Amen. I think that was your cue to stand up and go to somebody and meet and greet them. Make sure you tell them your name. Sharday, give me a little bit more on 19, a little bit more monitors. Amen. Once again, I want to say good morning to everyone. Hope that your morning is going well. It seems like it is. And now we're going to go ahead and get ready to lift up an offering in the Lord's house. And then afterwards, going to be our altar prayer. Amen. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. And one of the ushers will get them to you. Amen. So wanna, can you get us to Lady Baines for a thing? So want to remind you all that we we have our building fund uh, project going. Uh, and we're asking each person above your tithes and offering if you would give thirty dollars. Uh, we normally say it every first Sunday, but others say why limit us? We want to give whenever. So any Sunday that you want to give towards the building fund and it's not limited to $30. You can give what, what you want. This is for our blueprints. That's the first stage. You all know the first stage we go through is blueprints. And then that's when all the work starts where you have to sit down with the committee and uh, have to fight with the committee to, to, to get their permission to let us build. Uh, this is for our Family Life Center. It's going to be a multi-purpose center, so we will be able to have services in there as well. But it's it's for our community, and the reason why you know I'm looking at it, I, I did a survey. If you just give me a few minutes, I'll tell you why I did a survey, and we have two parks in the back down there in Riverwood. We have Barber Jordan and we have uh, Smoky Jasper, and uh, both of them are fine, nice parks. Uh, and then the next closest park we have is down Lauder Road. Uh, it's a nice park. Then the next park we have is Tidwell. Uh, and it's one back there Wood as well. But here's what I discovered. The only park that has an inside gym is going to be up here at Tidwell Park. And so when I started thinking about it, is that what about when it's cold and it's raining and children want to still be active with activities? And the closest library we have is down uh, on Little York, Little York and Homestead, other than the schools. And the schools are closed at certain times. They don't let you come in and use the libraries. And so when I went to thinking about all of that, in this community alone uh, is affected by it because there is no bus. Uh, that will take them from this part down to Tidwell or the Little Yard. So the closest bus stop is going to be up around a uh, big city food store. Uh, that's, and that's about a good mile or more to walk there and is unsafe. So our Family Life Center is going to be equipped uh, with a, a full basketball court. 
This would allow children in the neighborhood and adults as well to come out uh, on, on certain days and nights and uh, play in activities. Also, we're gonna have a computer room and we're also gonna put together a library as well where our children and adults can have access to it. Uh, there are adults that want to apply for jobs, but again, if they don't have transportation, they can't get to the library. So we want to offer all of this in the community along with um, a, uh, a workout room for the men and a workout room for the, for the women. Uh, and then uh, we're looking forward also as affordable daycare. So we just got a lot of things we want to put together uh, for uh, this community that this community would benefit. Again, we're not just a church in the community. We are a church that is a part of the community. Uh, thankful to you all again. We have given out over 100, 100 and uh, what was the total again, pounds of food? 180,000 and we're steady rising. We can't do this without all of us joining in together with our giving. And we also have uh, people who believe in what we're doing that they also financially supports us uh, in what we're doing. Yes, ma'am. No, we, we're gonna put together a program, we're gonna be meeting, and uh, we're gonna put together a program. Hopefully we can provide anywhere from 50 to 100 bicycles, depending on our sponsors. Um, so if, if you want to give towards that, I'll be putting that together if you give me until next week so that we can uh, do that. Last year, I think we gave away, what, about four, six, eight bikes. Uh, so this time we'll be working on our sponsors and we're working on our turkey giveaway as well. So we already have one sponsor that has sent 20, 20 turkeys. Um, uh, Sus Felicia is heading that. So she have already a commitment of about 100 or more turkeys that would be given out for Thanksgiving. So, you know, I want to say that uh, besides me, I know that God is proud of us of what we're doing because this is what Jesus uh, said in his word that we should do. And if all we're doing is just meeting and, and having service and teaching the word and having a good time, then going back to our homes, then we're failing to do ministry work because ministry work is for more than just coming in and having a good time learning the word. What the use in learning the word if you're not putting it? So this is where I want you all to understand. Uh, and we are accountable to you where you see where uh, the funds are going. And we, we're going to do more and we want to do more. Uh, so as you sow your seeds, just remember that you're not sowing your seeds in vain. And um, also, thank God, we, uh, Lady Baines put in for a grant. She uh, did her uh, first grant where we're trying to get a new professional looking sign. Uh, we're already believing it. She, uh, we got a meeting with the people Monday around two o'clock. I'm gonna be meeting with them here at the church. Uh, so once they approve it, grant, then we will be purchasing a new sign. We have already did the layout, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll have that for you all next week where you all can see what the layout of the sign is gonna look like. So brethren, we're gonna have to get together because we're gonna have to dig a hole about three feet deep and so, so wide and put our steel in it, excuse me, and pour our own concrete. It's not gonna be that much, maybe about a yard, not even a good yard of concrete, but uh, we're gonna do that and get that together, but I got to go and get permits. So still a good little ways, but at least we're heading in the right direction, amen? So give yourselves a hand clap. I'm so proud of you all, man. So at this time, as you stand to your feet, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, as we get ready to release tithes offerings and sacrificial offering and seed offerings into your kingdom, God. We plan it, but we don't do it, God, in order that we may receive more money back. We do it because you have assigned us to do it. But then, God, we believe your word also that you will open up your window of heaven and you will pour out a blessing. God, we receive your blessings humbly, Father. And then, God, we thank you because we know that we're bringing a joy to some family 
that is in need. We thank you, Lord, for such wonderful people and our sponsors and partners who give in this ministry to help us, God, and we thank you. I ask you personally in the name of Jesus that you may rain down your blessings upon all that are here and all that so they seize into this ministry in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and say amen. All right, you may come around. You know, and that, that spirit of entrepreneurship is just flowing through the church. I know uh, Sister Grigsby started her tea cake business, and she's been doing good, you know. Man. Man. As you may come to the altar... For those of you that need prayer, or you may stand right where you're at. If you want to come to the altar, you may. If not, you may stand right where you're at. Man. Man. That's Brother Dale. proud of brother Robert too let us not forget he's in school how's it going all right brother Robert is in school going for vet veterinary veterinary vet, veterinarian technology something yeah technology uh, okay and if y'all know anybody that need uh, somebody to deal with their horses brother Robert is the man amen so just release your faith. Just release your faith. Amen. Everybody, please bow your heads. Gracious Father, we just want to thank you for this opportunity to come before you, dear God. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray and ask that you forgive us of our sins, O Heavenly Father. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray and ask that you renew our minds, O dear God, so we may be able to understand your wisdom and knowledge that you have for us, O Heavenly Father. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray and ask that you search our hearts, O Heavenly Father. Lord, search our hearts for our desires, O dear God. Lord, and bring forth those desires, O Heavenly Father. Lord, so that they may benefit your kingdom, O dear God. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray and ask that you just make our ears sensitive unto your words so we may be able to hear what you have for us, O dear God. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray and ask that you allow us to be able to hear you, O dear God, so we may be able to apply our faith, O dear God, toward the circumstances, O dear God. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray and ask that you bless every individual that is in here, O dear God. Lord, and those who they are praying for, dear God, we ask that you bless them, O Heavenly Father. Lord, give them joy and peace inside of them, O Heavenly Father. Renew their minds, O Heavenly Father, so that they may be able to understand that you are there for them, O Heavenly Father, and that you will never leave them, O dear God. Lord, those who are coming to you, Lord, seeking you, Lord, I pray and ask that you just bless them, O Heavenly Father. Those who are sick, O oh Heavenly Father. Lord, we just claim victory, O oh Heavenly Father, that they are healed, O oh dear God. Lord, those who are in financial troubles, O oh Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you bless them and give them the knowledge, O oh Heavenly Father, to be able to understand finances, O oh Heavenly Father. Lord, give them discipline, O oh Heavenly Father, so that they may be able to spend it correctly, O oh Heavenly Father. Those who are searching for jobs, O oh Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you give us the courage to go out there and do what we need to do, O oh Heavenly Father. Give us courage to go out there, O Heavenly Father, so we may be able to go to the people, O Heavenly Father, and ask for the job and bring forth the skills that you have given us, O Heavenly Father. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray and ask that you just bless in every individual that came before you today, O dear God. Those who are not here right now, O Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you bless them right now, wherever they're at, O Heavenly Father, wherever they stand, O dear God. Lord, we ask that you heal them, O Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Also, I forgot, uh, uh, Evangelist Dale is in school going for uh, his, uh, to be a chef, uh, to be a chef. Then his next stage would be Kamasua. Man. Amen. So God bless all of you all. I'm, I'm loving it. I love to see God's people when you all are. Uh, are progressing and that's what prosperity is uh now you understand the fullness of prosperity is not 
uh, just what people think it's money and houses and cars. It's to increase in wisdom and knowledge in God. Amen. All right. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. Thank you. Why don't you stand to your feet all over the building? Amen. Come on, make some noise here. Clap your hands, everybody. Come on. This song is for nation. This song is to the world. I'm sold out. Clap your hands, everybody. Come on. Come on. My mind. Come on, y'all. Let's make one big choir. Come on. Come on, tell your neighbor I'm sold out. Mama. Come on, y'all, let's say it real loud. I'm so loud. Mama. Here we go. Who can separate? Come on. Come on, Jesus. I'm so loud. My mind. Come on, get happy when you say I'm sold out. My mind. Let's do the second verse. Come on, I come through the fire. He never.
Stand to your feet and celebrate the Lord. Mm. Clap your hands if you know God is good. Come on, clap them like you really know God is good. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we glorify you, amen. While you're getting ready, open your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark. 
My assignment this morning is to give you all a plainer, simpler, deeper meaning to Mark chapter 11, verses 22 and 23. So you had to get it because we got to be before you long. So you got to follow with me. And then up on Wednesday night, uh, we'll go in in depth on Mark chapter 11. So in other words, to catch everything that, that I've been teaching, you have to not only just get it on a Sunday, but you have to get some of it on a, on a Wednesday, amen? amen? Whatsoever, whosoever, everyone shout that, whatsoever. Whosoever. whosoever. Now say it with me correctly. Whosoever. whosoever. Whatsoever. Whosoever. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. Whosoever. Whosoever. Whatsoever. Now I hope that I kind of got your minds a little raveled and confused. Uh, but in Mark chapter 11, you may be seated. Verse 22 and 23. As we give you an understanding of this. You're going to find these words in there. Whosoever, whatsoever. You might want to underline them or highlight them in your Bible or if you take your notes, write it down. These are two important words. Amen? Whosoever, whatsoever. Those are the most two important words that you're going to hear in Mark chapter 11. And it reads, and Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Y'all see that? That's the first principle you might want to note right there. Have faith in God. Now let me drop back because I have to drop back and, and tell you again, remind you what faith is. Most of us know faith as Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Let me define faith. Faith is information that God has given us to act upon. Again, Paul said that faith without works is dead and works without faith is dead. Show me your faith without works and I'll show you my works by my faith. So Jesus answering and said unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, what's, what's that word again? Whosoever. Shall say, wait, stop right there. Point at, at someone and tell them that that means you or me. So he said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now, most of y'all know this was after the event that Jesus was hungry. He come across the fig tree. There were no figs on the tree. And, and, and Jesus said, you know what? Uh, it'll never grow again. It withered and died. When they came back through there, the disciples were so excited because it, it, what Jesus spoke, it happened. Okay. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. That's another one you need to underline. Shall not doubt in his heart. Whenever you doubt, it cancels out the promises of God. If you just doubt a little bit, it cancels out God's will and God's plan and God's purpose for your life. Because God does not bless a doubter. Remember what Jesus told Philip when they said, when are we going to see? You know, and Thomas said, I won't believe unless I touch. And he said, you know what, come on, touch. But blessed are those who have not seen, who have not touched, but believe. So you can't have, when it come down to God, people, you can't have no doubt. It is, if you want to find out what's wrong, that you're not receiving whatever God wants you to have or whatever you ask God for, it's because of your doubts. Notice what he says here in the word. 
that who shall ever say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. Remember, we talked about this protecting your heart. You know, that's where the devil fights you so hard at. Your heart, what is your heart? Your soul, your thoughts, your mind. He fights you against that. Because if he can get you to think negatively or doubt what God says, he has victory over you. Whenever you say, I can't do it, you cancel out, I can do all things in Christ. So whenever you doubt it, it cannot come to pass. Because God cannot go against your free will. So now he says... And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. Watch this. Shall believe. Now, y'all know believe is a part of the process. That those things which he shall say. Now, watch this. It's a difference. You got to interpret this thing. Tell you, God been, listen, listen. God, God, been, God been dealing with me. I like to call it a good mess up mind. And when he messed my mind up good. I mess up other folks' mind good. That's what I did Wednesday night with the brethren and kind of even messed my own mind up. The Holy Spirit had to come back and grab it. Then I called Brother Mike last night it was, huh, while I was in the barber's chair. I said, I got another one for you that God threw at me, you know. And this is what God is doing because he said, Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Man, when the book go to speaking to you, you know it's Jesus talking. So I hope y'all understood what I just said because I don't want, if that happened to you, you're not going crazy. Jesus said, Lord, I come in the volume of the book. He's speaking to you. No, you're not going to look at the pages and it look like the pages are talking to you. But when you look at his word and you go to reading that word and you see that, wow, that I see what he's saying. I, here, here's one I want to throw at y'all, just the ice break. You think I should throw it at him? Okay, okay watch, watch this here. How many of you know John 3.16? I'm just going to deviate, but I'm going to come right back. How many of you know what John 3.16 says? Come on, let, let me see you. Come on, say it. Y'all don't even have to look at your Bible. Come on, what? Okay, stop right there. Well, what do y'all get from that? I mean, what do you get? Well, what do you get? See, let me share something with you. God no longer loved this world. The scriptures say he loved, loved with an E-D is past tense. That's why the Bible say that if you are a friend of this world, you're an enemy of God. God no longer loved the world. Now, that's all I can give you. I may give you some more Wednesday night, but I want to stay right here. Y'all thought y'all had me, but I, I'm not gone. So watch this. He said, I just want to just mess with your mind a little bit and let you think about it. He says, if you don't doubt in your heart, but shall believe in those things, which he shall, watch this here, which he said. Here's the point. He didn't say ask. Y'all see that? He says, if you don't doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass. He didn't say ask, but if you say it, that means speaking it. So if that's what he means, but there, why are we still saying God Give me. When he say you speak it, look, I, let's look at it again. If you don't doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which he said, what are you saying? Again, remind you, Proverbs 18, the power of life and death is in the tongue. What are you saying? Our tongues are saying one thing, but our heart is believing something else. Our tongues is fascinating, saying some things, but our heart is saying it'll never come to pass. But Jesus said here that whatsoever things which he said shall come to pass, and what he said after that, he shall have whatsoever. That's the other word. He what? Not what he asked for, but what he said. In other words, what, what God is doing here, he's saying, look, you, you're trying to use your faith to ask for some things, but in this scripture, I said for you to say some things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It means you declare and decree some things. 
See, we, we got to know when to ask and when to say. Follow me now. Follow me now. So notice now, have faith in God means to have and keep on keeping on having information or instructions from God. Again, what is that? Faith is information that God gave us to act upon. Here it is in Mark 11, 22 and 23. He says that first thing you have to do is that you have to have faith in God. You know? And then what's the next thing you have to do? You have to, you have to, watch this here. You have to say something. First thing, you have to have faith in God. Look at verse 22. Verse 23, he says that whatsoever, uh, whosoever shall say, have faith in God, then say. If you don't have faith in God, it does you no good to say. You got to follow biblical principles because watch this, you're doing what God say do. First thing you have to do, have faith in God, Jesus said. And then next, you have to say unto it. That means you have to speak unto it. You have to say. Y'all see that? And then look what he says. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. The, the third point is, you cannot doubt. You cannot doubt. Okay, now watch this. Here's the next point. The next point is believe. Have faith in God, say, don't doubt, and believe. Okay? That those things which ye shall, again, now you have to say it again. Everybody shout, say. 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 Now touch somebody and say, keep on saying I'm going to show it to you in the scripture in a minute. He says, and if you believe that those things which he, shall, which, which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Have faith in God. You have to keep on keeping on having information or instructions, and God has given us that. Amen? And, and remember, faith is information that God gave us to act upon. What the use in asking God for more faith if you're not acting upon what he already gave you. He put it in us. The Bible says he has given every man a measure of faith. Y'all should know this, amen? So the question is, if God has given us information, why is it that we're not acting upon it? We're trying to hope by accident it'll happen, then we can say, I had faith. No, it don't work like that. So now, in these two verses, faith is used one time, and the word say is used three times. Y'all didn't, didn't recognize that, huh? Read it again. You'll find faith is used one time, but the word say or said is used three times. That means God saying, here, you got to keep saying it. You following me? Whosoever is used once. Y'all see that? The word, uh, watch this, because this word is big enough to contain you, your family, and me and my family. Just that one word, whosoever. Yeah. Everybody shout, whosoever. whosoever. See, see that, and, and let, me, let me talk to the married couples now. You have to say the same thing. One can't be saying one thing and the other one saying something different. Because it, it, you're working against each other. I found this, that if your faith is stronger, then the other one needs to shut up and start saying what you're saying and just tag on along with your faith. Amen? After all, if, if you, see, see, watch this here. If you want a better marriage, you have to say it. If you want your kids to fall under the authority of God's word, you have to say it. See, you watch this here, watch this here, check this out. You're getting what you've been saying. When you look and say your kids is bad, guess what you're going to get? Bad kids. See? That, that, I, I'm telling you what Jesus said. Look at somebody and say, you did it to yourself. He said, whosoever. 
If you want your business, see, see, look, I, I'll show y'all, this just happened the other day. Okay, I'm, I'm cooking, you know, I'm all excited. You know, I'm cooking for one of my customers, I'm cooking them four briskets. My wife sighed and say, she say, I want a brisket for the house. Okay, good, we, we're gonna eat some brisket. Well, I'm cooking the brisket to eat for the house, next thing I know, she done put a fly out there saying, brisket sandwiches for sale. So I say, oh, really? She said, oh, well, you know, they got about five at the school. I said, okay, that's cool. You know, that really ain't no, you know, well, that'll pay for a brisket. That's good. I'm still thinking about brisket. Next thing I know, now, now I, now I could have been negative and say, no, nah, no, nah, we're not going to do this. But, you know, I said, well, just follow along with it. You know, just follow along with it. Next thing I know, Billy come calling, Tiana come calling, and I'm like, what in the world going on here? Then other people calling me and saying, where are y'all at? What do you mean, where we at? Who is this? My son is up there at the church. So I'm like, this thing, the way. so next thing I know, the briskets start getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the school kept calling saying, oh, I ate one, but that wasn't enough. I need some more. And then, and so finally, I had to get smart. I said, oh, I see where this is going. So by the time she gets back to the house, I'm sitting there saying, what you doing? I said, I'm taking a lunch break. I'm eating before it's all gone. I fixed me a chopped beef sandwich. Yeah, I got it. So, so watch this here. She said something, and she believed, and she had faith in God, and it happened. That's what it's all about. If you don't have faith in God, then you lost out on everything. I mean, look what he said. Go back to the scripture. He says, and what so, you can speak to the mountain. That means whatever problems you have, whatever circumstances you have, you can speak to it. You can speak to it. Don't run to God. I know it sounds good. God, don't take away my mountain, but give me the strength to climb. That's a song. Don't even throw that away. He says, speak to it. And if you believe, see, first of all, you got to have faith in God because you got to realize the words that you're speaking are not your words. No, it's not your words. It's God's word. What are they? He said it right here. Jesus said, have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things. God already said it. When you let that in bed inside of you and you start talking, you are saying what God said. And Jesus said, it have to come to pass. So again, faith is used one time. But the word say is three times. That's very important. Want you to say it. Want you to say it. Whosoever is used once, there are four pronouns that point to whosoever. His is used once, and he is used three times. See? You, you can find that in the scripture. God wants you to start saying. Some of us are so accustomed to saying negative things and we're so used to failing at everything that we do until it became a lifestyle. See, I'm like this now. I don't have time to waste. I'm, we're not getting no younger. We're getting older. And all of those desires is in the graveyard. Don't wait till you get 80, 90, 70 years old and then look back and reflect over your life and say, I wish I would have. You know, no, it's time to start saying it now. You want your home to be blessed, you got to say it. You got to say, my home is blessed, my children is blessed, I'm blessed, and we're blessed in the Lord. You have to say those things. And you have to believe, you have to have faith in God because you got to believe and have faith in the blesser. Am I making sense to you? High five somebody and tell them, get this. So watch this here. So our information or instructions from God is, is, is the, the scriptures that we read. When we read them, God is telling us what we need to do. And the main thing is have faith and believe and say. 
You might want to write that down. Have faith in God, believe in what God said, and you have to say it. You can't be lazy. You have to say it. You know, some of us are so quick to say other stuff, say that. If you're tired of being broke, then start saying it. Start saying, I'm tired of being broke. See, I made that confession a long time ago. When I got tired of it, since so passing, I said, you know what? I'll never be broke again a day in my life. May not ever be rich, but I'll never be broke. Why? Because I have faith in God who supply my needs. And because I believe in that, you know what? S some of y'all just don't understand how good God is. You know, I, I know y'all been experiencing it. I I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not all up into your business, but I know, you know, what, won't he do it? We, we, and we'll look, look why, why? It makes us look really crazy. It makes us look crazy. How? When we're running around worrying about what we're going to do, panicking. Oh, I got, oh, I got, I got. I don't, I don't know. And, and then all of a sudden when you calm down, God open up the picture and we look crazy and say, well, what you was doing all of this for? If you have faith in him and believe in him and say it, then you relax because he going to work it out. Can I get an amen? amen? Won't he work it out? And he'll work it out so good, boy, I tell you, you, have, you can't help but to praise God. Sometimes you have to stop and say, God, in all of my, uh, I'm going to use this word. I don't even know if it's a real word. I know part of it is, but I'm going to add my own to it. Ignorantosity. <laughs> I like that just sound good. It, it really just saying in our ignorant state of mind, but I want to make it sound good and put it on the end of, you know what I mean? Uh, we have to understand who God is. See, God don't want us worrying. It's a sin. That separated you from God, and God can't do it. Sometimes you just got to stop and say, you know what, God, I don't know how, but I know you're going to work it out. I know you have already worked it out. I just need you to help me to understand how you're working it out. Sometimes you just got to get out of the way and let God do what he's going to do. Am I making sense to you? Don't cry about the situation. Cry with joy saying, God, it hurts, but I know you're working it out. You know? So now watch this here. So our information instructions come from God. You know, I had this thought, you know, I, okay, I'm, I, got, I got the shift right here because I'm almost done. But I got the shift because I need, I need to throw a prophecy. I, God had, I had, I had, watch this here. God threw, threw something at me about, about you, Mike. And he said, okay, you need to tell him he need to get ready because there are going to be so many loads that's coming his way. The good loads, you know, that's coming your way that it's going to make you so excited. But you got to stay on the track, you know. I've learned to do that too. See, see let me tell you about when you're dealing with prophets and prophetess and all of that and prophecy. When God's speaking, you don't have to ask questions. See, that's what the psychics does. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, um, anybody in your family, do you know anybody named Tyrone? If God's speaking, he already know if you know Tyrone or not. He'll just say, Tyrone is coming to your house. And, and that's what he did when Saul was blind. He, he gave him a vision and showed him uh, and showed, who was that the other man? Ananias. Show, God showed them both what was going on. Wasn't no guesswork at it. That's how you separate. That's why people go to talk about go to smiling. I'm like, oh, you fishing fools, you way off, you know. So anyway, watch this. Our mountain is anything bigger than us that requires God's power to handle it. <laughs> Think about it. Whatever it is that's bigger than you. Don't worry about it. But Jesus say, speak to it. Say it. You speak to it and say it. Why? Again, it is the power that work it in us. It is the power that work it in us. Until you come to that level to really understand 
the power that's working in you, my God, you, 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 you still limiting God. If you realize who God is and what God can do, it will make you release your limits off God. Your worship will be different. Your praise would be different. Why? Because you know that God is greater than anything that ever come up against you. See? And I know most people say, you know what? God may not come when you want him, but he's on time. Let me tell you something. God's word is always there. Jesus say, when you think I'm far, I'm near. Because I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody shout, whosoever. That's what he's saying. Whosoever, whosoever. It don't have to be the pastor. It don't have to be the deacon. It can be your children. Whosoever. See, I was having a conversation about telling my grandchildren. They just, they just fascinate me sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you go to Holland. I ah, sit down, sit down, be quiet, shut up, shut up. And then they just fascinate you with all these conversations. So I'm sitting out on the patio with them, we sit in there, and all of a sudden, their little minds got inquiring and start asking, you know, start asking about heaven and, 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 and what was up there. So I went to explain to them, I see where you see the clouds, that's the first heaven. Well, where's God? God in the third heaven. You, 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 we can't see there. So I had to explain it because you know why? If you start teaching the children this, they, their faith is so pure. After all, let, let me tell you how, how, how we did a good job, but we ruined them. Because all we ever told them about was the devil. The devil going to get you. And what we do, we put a, 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 a little devil looking in a red suit with a pitchfork and say, the devil going to get you for being bad. We use that to force our children to be good. So all they know about is the devil. Now watch this here. But now, imagine if you start teaching them about Jesus. If you start teaching them what God can do and how God can do it. Imagine their faith is so pure that they'll start praying. Sometimes we may need to stop and ask our children to pray for us. Because sometimes we forget our way because we feel we done got a little bit too adultish that, that we don't know. We, we just say some stuff. Because it sound good. But see, you don't know what it is if you don't have faith in God. See? So now, now watch this here. Again, our mountain is anything bigger than, than we are. And it requires God's power to handle it. So everybody shall say. So what do you have to do? You have to say your instructions or say your information. That's faith to your mountain. See? The word believe means to act on your information and instructions. See, so we, we, faith is information and instructions that God gave us to act upon and believe is what? To act upon. Are y'all with me? Y'all tell somebody, say, are you woke? Y'all forget? See, right there, y'all missed out on a lot of stuff right there. L let me say it again. Faith is information and instructions to act upon. Right? Everybody shout right. Okay, so if faith is information and instructions to act upon, believe is what? Believe is means to act on the information and instructions. Everybody shout right. So now you have to act upon because that's what your belief is. See? And let me tell you something. God has a divine order. Let me tell you all this now. Because if you don't do it, in a divine order, it's not going to happen. I don't care. Your, your daddy can be sitting next to Jesus. Your mama can be cooking him a pot roast for dinner. But if God say to do it a certain way, you can go to your mama and tell your mama and your daddy, I know you close, tell Jesus this. God is not going to honor it because God has a divine order. Amen. See, your, 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 your dad or your mama may be real spiritual and religious, but it does not mean that God is going to answer them because of you. Because again, everybody shout divine order. divine order. 
See, you see, here's what we want. We want stuff our way. This is the way I want it to be done. Because see, I, I, I don't I want the pastor to lay hands and pray for me. I don't want the deacon to do it. Because I, I the, the pastor is next to Jesus. I don't want the deacon. Let me tell you something. If God told the deacon to lay hands on you and pray, you better get yourself down and let him lay hands on you and pray. You, this, let me say it like this here. This is not, I hope I get it right, this is not jack in the box, have it your way. Who is that that say have it your way? Burger King. This is not Burger King. You don't just have it your way. You, you ought to be tired by now trying to tell God how he should bless you. When you should go with his divine order on how he say do it. I, I'll show you one and I, I'm, I'm, I'm closing right here. Check this out. Check this out. You still want to hate your enemy when God say love him and do good. But you still want to hate. And then you think you come before God and say God bless him. No, no, it's not going to happen. It's divine order. Your blessings may be deterred on how you follow instructions. Am I making sense? When, when a doctor gives you the medication, what did he say? Take one every six, four hours. Watch this. As needed for pain. You ain't got pain, but you still take him. I don't understand that. You know, so and let, let me just move on. So watch this here. Say your instructions information to your mountain. The word believe means to act on your information. What action is required here to move mountains? Say it with me. Say, say, say. 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 That's the actions it takes to move a mountain is said. You have to quit being lazy tongue. You know, that, that's what's wrong. We, we're lazy tongue. We don't want to say, we don't want to believe. We just want to just let it happen. It's not going to happen like that. Amen? Now watch this. So, what if I tell you now your name needs to be whosoever? Because that, that's what our name is to God. It's not Tiffany. It's not Helen. It's not Dale. It's not Clyde. When it come down to moving your mountain, your name is whosoever. Because he didn't limit and say, if Omar speak to this mountain, if Robert speak to this mountain, he say whosoever. So whatever your, your name is, whosoever. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be moved and believe. Number one, he say have what? Faith in who? God. And then you say it. Then you believe it. And you keep on saying it. That's what you have to do. If you think you're going to get anything from God resolved in your life, you have another thing coming if you're not following these principles. If you don't believe me, try it. Just try it Jesus' way for one time. Just try it. And then come back and testify and tell us how it worked. Get yourself and your way out of it and just say for, for once, just for once, God, I'm going to obey your word. Let me see. I'm going to have faith in God. So my faith is the information and instructions that you gave me, God. Okay. And then what I'm going to do here, God, is that according to your word, I'm going to say, I'm going to speak this to my mountain. God, I'm no longer going to ask you to move the mountain, but I'm going to speak to it myself because of the faith and the information. What is the information? Jesus told you what the faith. He said, speak to the mountain. That's your information instructions. Speak to it. He didn't say get on the phone and gossip about it. Women, let me help y'all. Let me help y'all out. Let me help y'all out. See, y'all still living back here in the, in the past. Because let, let me help you out. Every time I see, Lord, I know I'm going to get in trouble, but look, I am so sick of these women conferences because every time I see a women's conference, you know what it's dealing with? 
pain, hurt, pain, hurt. What he did, what she did, back to me. You stuck, you don't even know what your future is because you let the devil keep you in the past. When Paul say, forgetting those things that are behind and press towards the mark. I don't ever see a woman conference that's positive to say who you are, how great you are. They bring you right back into depression. And, and you, you know, that, that, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I offend you, I'm happy because maybe I, I'm not saying as you all, whoever watching this, I'm sorry. I'm just tired of them playing on the emo Women are very emotional. And I'm sick of people playing on y'all emotions because y'all are greater than your emotions. Ain't nothing resolved yet. If you're still angry about or still hurt about something 20 years ago, you mean you done went to all these conferences and you're still feeling the same way? Something is not working. Why do we keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result? Try something new. Speak to it. Say it in God's name. See, I, 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 now I'm not talking about... Yes, I am. If you you putting together them conferences like that, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Because you all are greater than that. It's the power that's in you all. You know? Greater than that. Rahab, when she went, she didn't say, oh, y'all, I'm so sorry. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a prostitute, and I've been beating all the... She didn't say, hey, when you come, save my family. She didn't look back over her life. What happened? Her family was saved. You got to start saying some stuff. Saying some stuff. You tired of being depressed? Saying some stuff. I see women all the time be so excited. Oh, I feel so refreshed. Oh, it's like God spoke to us about the same stuff. So your name now is whosoever. Start saying and keeping on, keeping on. What am I saying Say, be consistent. You got to be consistent in what you're saying. You got to be consistent. You can't get there and say, say, my children is blessed. My children is blessed. God, if it's your will, let my children be blessed. It's already his will. Quit destroying what God has already spoken about you. Take your limits off God and watch what God does. For, 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 for just one moment, get out of the boat with the negative people and walk on the water. Even if you sink, y'all know he'll save you. Am I making sense? See, be, be, see, when you become great, you don't follow the crowd. You follow Christ. You got to get out of that. So he said again, now y'all know I don't care. Y'all that's watching, I'm sorry I love you. I don't care if you get upset, you, don't, you get mad. You need to free God's people. Quit having these same things going on to keep people to study coming, coming, coming. You know, know who you are in Christ. Know who you are in Christ, people. That's all I can tell you. Look, look, I'm going to be around for a long time. Me and God already got that pack. I'm going to be around for a long time. I ain't for the dot no time soon. But let me tell you this. I'm enjoying life because it's the word of God that sets you free. And when you are free, you are free to believe. You're free to have faith. Whosoever, whatsoever. Whosoever have faith and say and believe will have whatever you say. That's the Bible. God spoke that. I didn't dream it. I didn't get it out of jet. I just simply told you what Jesus said. You ought to be now, instead of being excited about what God is doing, that's, that's what Jesus is simply telling them. Y'all excited because y'all saw what I spoke and said. You could do the same thing because Jesus was literally telling them, I'm speaking what my father has already spoke. So all you have to do is speak what he have already spoken. 
I don't care if it's a business. I don't care what it is. You have to speak it. Because by you running to others don't mean it's going to happen. You got to get it yourself. Amen? Come on, stand to your feet all over the building. <laughs>